My name is Converse West, but most people call me Connie. And um, I retired from the insurance business about 15 years ago. But now I'm working for the Alexandria Police Department. And the story there is that uh, when I retired, or even a little before I retired, I started doing volunteer work a few hours a week for the police department. And they put me in the uh, telephone report unit where I took uh, telephone reports and initiated and wrote police reports uh, with, under a lot of supervision as a volunteer. But I got very comfortable with that. And uh, about a year or a little more ago, they decided that uh, they wanted to expand the department. And I said, well, if you're going to hire somebody, what about me? And I was over age 80 at the time. And they said, well, anyone can apply. And I did apply. And um, there were a, a large number of applicants that were interviewed. And uh, I probably did have a bit of an inside track, but I did get the job. And I'm uh, really very happy with the uh, work. And, uh, some place to go every day. Uh, you miss that when you're retired. And I had uh, been involved in many things in Alexandria, but still, I'm, I, I really, uh, I'm working for a fine organization in the police department and uh, very proud to be associated with them. I moved to Alexandria in 1976. Uh, been looking in the area. We, we had lived in Arlington for a while, but I was looking for a uh, place to buy instead of rent. And uh, being in my mid-40s, I found a, a beautiful condominium that's uh, looking east from the landmark area over the woods and uh, with the Masonic Memorial in the background. And I said, this is, this is it for me, brand new condo. and. Um, on to the uh, involvement with Alexandria. I hadn't been in the apartment for about a month and when they uh, announced that a developer wanted to build a 12-story condo uh, across the street from me and between uh, me and the uh, view. And uh, that annoyed me and I uh, called every of the uh, 220 residents in our building and managed to get 40 people down to a hearing at City Hall. And that got the intention of a number of people, including um, the famed Ben Brenman, who uh, was a great civic activist. And uh, he called me after that and said, you need to get involved with a lot of things. And he got me involved. And uh, uh, before I knew it, I was working with the Homes Run Park Committee, which is a local neighborhood association and I've been with them um, ever since. And um, the um, city council in invited me, or uh, a member of the city council invited me to apply for a job on a board or commission. And I applied for the traffic and parking board. And I was on that for 22 years, retired from that fairly recently after, as chairman. And um, now I'm on the Emergency Medical Services Council for the city. But uh, of course, along the way with something like that, you get uh, invited to other things. And I was in the United Way board for 10 years. Um, I was uh, a year or two ago invited to join the board of Agenda Alexandria, which is an organization that um, uh, has monthly dinner meetings where they, they uh, look at the issues, but they don't take sides. And it's a very, uh, very good organization and has uh, very active um, participation from people in the community. And of course, I'm on my um, condominium board. And uh, I've been uh, president in the past, but I'm secretary now. And uh, I'm also. Uh, Secretary of the Alexandria Federation of Civic Associations. So uh, all in all, I keep busy doing a lot of things. And uh, um, all of these relate to the city I have come to love very much, which is Alexandria.
Well, I think uh, Alexandria is a wonderful place to live, and uh, I'm almost sorry I didn't find it sooner, although I was aware of it. I always loved Old Town, of course. Everyone, I think, does. And, um, but the uh, city as a whole is, uh, I think, um, it's run very well. I think since I've um, been involved with uh, life in Alexandria, uh, it, um, Alexandria affects everything I do. I look to Alexandria when I think I'm going to participate in anything. And I uh, look for my entertainment and my dining out and everything in Alexandria, just as the Chamber of Commerce would love to have me do. But I do it because I really like it. And um, so I bring my, my stepsons are in um, Loudoun County and Manassas now, and I make them come to Alexandria to <laughs> um, take me out to eat because I uh, rather go to Alexandria than there. And um, except that the um, Alexandria doesn't have the nationals, uh, would, I would seldom go to D.C. except for that. <laughs> and, uh, so uh, you know, Alexandria affects my life very much. Well, I'm very proud to be a part of the Living Legend uh, program. and. Uh, um, very pleased that I was nominated for it and uh, hope that I uh, will live up to the honor. When I was um, getting ready to retire, well, actually, when I moved to Alexandria, I was about uh, 45 years old, I guess. and But I was beginning to think that um, I would be staying in Alexandria and I was looking for something to do when I retired. And along during that time period, uh, my wife died. I've since, since remarried and been widowed a second time, but uh, all of this uh, took place in Alexandria and I had, um, ended up that I have, uh, had a lot of spare time that uh, I felt should be useful rather than uh, uh, sedentary uh, watching TV or whatever. Uh, I've also noticed in civic work that uh, there's an awful, awfully large amount of, of apathy and uh, that the um, uh, citizens uh, have to be urged to participate. And so I try to be a uh, cheerleader with that and keep uh, people uh, coming to meetings and, uh, and uh, helping with the uh, city. It seems that people um, only want to be heard as I did originally when they object to something like I did to the uh, condominium they were going to build across the street from me. And um, you really need to have a uh, maintained level of participation to uh, work with the city to make it a better place. My passion is to keep uh, busy, and um, as I say, when I've found that I've had uh, time on my hands, I think it goes very slowly, and I uh, uh, appreciate now that I'm retired that uh, work is, uh, is a pleasure, not a, uh, a burden. And... Uh, so I, uh, my, my passion is to keep going as long as I can. And I think uh, when I get to the point where I am not able to uh, go to work every day and uh, be out and about, uh, I probably uh, won't last very long because it's my um, desire to, to be active and to do things. and. Uh, so I, I'm not going to go to Florida and bask in the sun ever. What inspired me to do what I'm doing is um, the ambition to, 
to keep working at something. Uh, when I was volunteering for the police department, I, I felt I was uh, really accomplishing something. Uh, my job there was and, and is now um, talking to people in Alexandria who are victims of a crime, in my case, minor crimes, because the important ones uh, require an immediate response by police cars, but the uh, small um, uh, bicycles stolen and things like that uh, that I get to report on are people who um, have never been the victim of a crime. And in Alexandria, that's the usual thing, that nobody has been a victim of crime before. That's not true of every place, but in Alexandria it is. But the people I talk to, therefore, are um, sometimes pretty shook up about something relatively small, that somebody steals a house plant from their yard or their bicycle or something. And in the police department, we take that very seriously. And I think I'm uh, in a good position as an older person to be quite sympathetic with people who, uh, who have that trauma. One of my great interests is trying to get people involved. Uh, living in a condominium, uh, we have trouble getting people uh, to come to a, a house party, um, even, uh, even when the condominium provides the refreshments, sometimes we have a problem. Uh, and uh, getting people to come to a civic meeting, which I've been doing now for uh, what, since 1979, something like that. Um, it's really like pulling teeth to get people to participate. And what I'd like to see uh, is that uh, there's more civic participation because as soon as something comes along that people aren't in favor of, all of a sudden you get a clamor and people going to City Hall. And the city, uh, and as a city employee, I have particularly mindful that the city staff in all departments works very hard to try to do the right thing too. And uh, there's just no way that you're ever going to satisfy everyone. But um, if everyone participates, and then everyone, I think, gets to uh, feel that uh, the right decisions are being made. Well, I was born in Greenfield, Massachusetts, in the Berkshires, in the western Massachusetts, but uh, grew up mostly in northern New Jersey. Uh, and um, uh, after I served in the Army in the Korean War, I um, went um, to work for Prudential Insurance, which was a big New Jersey company. And uh, after I learned the ropes of the insurance business there, I found a job with uh, the uh, United Services Life Company, which was in Washington, D.C. And I, spent, I was with them for more than 30 years until I retired. I lived in New Jersey, um, uh, actually, from when I was a very small child. The, the Depression made my father lose his job, and he was able to get employment in New Jersey rather than in the hills of western Massachusetts. And so uh, we came to New Jersey and um, I went to grade school and then high school there. And the high school years were the war years. And uh, so we did uh, um, lots of things that uh, wouldn't have been done by um, uh, youngsters then. Uh, we were recruited one time uh, to fight a forest fire in um, uh, the New Jersey, New York border around uh, Suffern, if you know where that is. And they came through the schools and asked for volunteers. And of course, they did have to, we did have to get a release from our parents, but then they put us in trucks and they took us up there. And we worked on the fire line for three or four or five days. I uh, was about 17, 18 years old at the time. And um, that's an experience that uh, wouldn't happen now. I mean, uh, people would just go nuts about insurance and things like that. So um, 
that's what my childhood was was quite uh, pleasant in New Jersey, and uh, then I went to college there also, Drew University, a great university that I highly recommend. And after I graduated from there, I took a year at uh, NYU Law School, uh, trying to uh, work several jobs and uh, uh, to pay my tuition and commute from northern New Jersey to New York every day. Uh, uh, my grades suffered badly, and so uh, that time the draft was still in effect, and I got drafted and uh, went to Korea and served my 14 months in Korea at the very end of the war, and, and then came back and worked for the insurance company until I came to this area. I was in the uh, life insurance business for 40 years altogether and uh, uh, ended up um, specializing in reinsurance where uh, an insurer um, lays off part of the risk uh, so that, uh, well, as a, um, when I was involved in group insurance, I made the mistake uh, one time of uh, insuring uh, what was, uh, giving group insurance to what was then the Baltimore Bullets they later moved to Washington and changed their name, but um, I found out we, that couldn't be reinsured because uh, if our plane went down, the insurance company would just <laughs> go under. <laughs> I mean, because it's like a million dollars on each of the players. And, uh, anyway, uh, I didn't make that mistake again, and I kept my job, and I got through the season without having a disaster. So, But uh, then I, I got involved in reinsurance, and that's... Um, uh, actually in the actuarial department and it's all numbers and I, uh, I enjoyed working with numbers but uh, I was always, um, when you're in the uh, business world you're always worried about deadlines and, uh, and uh, errors that's going to cost the company money and things like that and so uh, uh, it was a great relief to uh, finally get to where they gave me my retirement luncheon and uh, pension and and I would do things uh, that I enjoy doing, like for the city, and now working for the police department where I don't have a lot of career pressure because I don't expect to move up in my job. I just expect to enjoy doing it. I was uh, standing in line at supermarkets with oration books, and uh, you'd have to... Uh, even with the ration books, you had to stand in line. And uh, so I'd go at 6 in the morning and stand in line for three hours until the store, the stores opened at 9 o'clock in those days. And, and I'd get in there and I'd get the last of the pineapple juice or whatever was available that day. And um, that went on for a few years. You know, they had the, the A, B, or C uh, colored cards on, the, on, the, on your windshield, too. And uh, A, I... I Get which way I think A, you could hardly get any gas, maybe enough to go to church one day a week, and B, you could um, uh, drive to work every day, and C, uh, you had pretty much free rain. And uh, my dad drove a carpool of us to school every day, and our school was uh, seven miles away, so it was needed, and we didn't have a school bus. And, uh, and he also then drove to work. And uh, so he got a C card, and uh, we felt very privileged for that. Well, this isn't about Alexandria, but when I was a young child in uh, New Jersey, uh, my folks decided to drive us out to my uncle's farm in um, near Joplin, Missouri, in Neosho, Missouri. It was a four-day trip. Um, no highways in those times. Went through every little town, and... Um, we would pull into a motel. My mom and dad would get a room, and my brother and I would sleep in the car. And uh, we went out there and spent uh, six weeks on a farm. In fact, that was 1939, and uh, my uncle out there um, went out one day and bought a radio because there was war in Europe, and he wanted to know about it. And he went on, and uh, he was a little local preacher in addition to being a farmer. He went on and became a chaplain and served through World War II, 
and then in Korea, and then retired as a uh, captain, I think, and uh, then went back to preaching again. My um, wife I married after, um, after Ruth died in 1982, I think it was. Uh, I married um, Deja D'Alessandro, who was um, from uh, Yugoslavia. And I always intended to write her life story and never got it clear enough to do. Maybe I still will, but um, she was a real hero to me because I read about these heroes during World War II who uh, worked in the underground and uh, uh, lived in the woods and so forth. And that's what she did in Korea, and I'm in Korea, Yugoslavia, in Serbia. And um, she met her husband, uh, Joe D'Alessandro, uh, who was parachuted in with the OSS. And he, she helped him get uh, uh, information and drew maps for him and so forth. And, so uh, they got married, and by that time, um, she was fighting against Tito and was a wanted person, and they managed to spirit her out of Yugoslavia on a liberty ship. And uh, she came up, and she went out on a little boat out of um, the city of Split in uh, Croatia and met this boat out in the Adriatic and came to America. And she was quite a remarkable person. Well, I always tell people that they've, they've already remembered me by naming the entire half of the city the West End. And so uh, I don't think that, uh, I just like to be remembered uh, as somebody who, who did uh, the right thing and uh, did good things for people. I've come to love Alexandria uh, since I moved here and I've um, worked, I hope, uh, hard to make the city a better place. And I do hope that I'll be remembered for that. Well, I think it, uh, it encourages uh, people who have worked for the uh, city and done good things in the city for a long time um, to uh, show that they've, uh, they're being rewarded with recognition. And I'm certainly very, very proud to, be, uh, to have this recognition. Um, so I think it's a, um, a wonderful program and, uh, and I hope they keep it up forever.